What is happening guys, Cowboy here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to max out your familiarity as fast as possible to get the maximum benefit out of your gear and inherit over abilities. Now for those that don't know what I'm talking about, familiarity is this little gauge that you can find at the top of pieces of gear. It basically indicates how long you've used an item, and the higher it is, the stronger that gear is. That's exactly why my chest and my boots here have 35 attack, whereas on the gloves it's only 20. Now, the more important aspect of familiarity is that we can actually move stats over that are on our gear. We have two different types of inheritables. You have one like this and this, where it's an orange inheritable, and that's going to permanently move a stat over. If I was to take these gloves with maximum familiarity and use them as a soul match catalyst, it would move the attack over to a piece of gear, kind of how you see here. We also have your regular inheritables, like the one on this rifle. If I was to uh, take this rifle and use it as the catalyst and what I mean by catalyst is the second item you select It's going to move that bullseye bonus over to a piece of gear replacing one So for example, if I first selected my throat crusher cannon and then I selected this and it had max familiarity That life drain bullseye would be replaced by the bullseye bonus Whereas if I selected this first and then I used the warrior the west bow here that has an orange familiarity It would just slap an amrita earned on under an empty line now, in addition to that, if you have a piece of gear that, for example, like this, that doesn't have that familiarity icon whatsoever, uh, if you were to take a piece of gear that has that double familiarity icon, it would just move a stat over into an empty line as well. But what's important is this is how you get your gear maxed out like you see here, where you have every single special effect filled and you can really min-max and make it exactly how you want it. This is how people get those crazy ninja builds where every single piece of gear has ninjutsu power and untouched ninjutsu and shuriken and kunai damage and they're throwing, you know, 10,000 damage kunais. It's by going through this process. Now, there are a couple different things you can do to make this process faster, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about all of those. Now, a big thanks to 2 Clement over on Reddit. He's been putting together a lot of the text guides for Neo 2, so if you're on the Neo subreddit, you've probably seen his posts before. Uh, and he's actually working on a guide about this exact topic, and he asked me to make a video to help get the word out, because at the end of the day, the more we grow as a community, the more everyone is going to benefit. So, in terms of maximizing our familiarity gains, first up, we want to have familiarity bonus on our active ranged weapon. We want to make sure it's in the active slot, but at max familiarity, this bonus goes up to 19.9, so almost 20% there. We can also get it on both of our accessories, up to almost 15%. So just by doing that, that's going to give us 30, and then we almost have another 20 here, so that's an extra 50% gain. Beyond that, we can also use Uchiko Powder. Now, Chiku Powder can be forged at the blacksmith using rare mats. I don't remember exactly what mission uh, you get the recipe from, but I know I can forge it at the blacksmith right now, and I'm, uh, I've, you know, I've beaten the game, obviously. Um, and this is going to allow us to raise our familiarity even further. Now, familiarity in particular is going to scale off how many hits you're doing, not necessarily how much damage you're doing. So to that extent, we want to maximize our hits, and for that, Dual Swords is going to be one of the best weapons in the game. With Water Sword 2, we just get faster and faster here, and we're going to be able to hit the enemy a ton of times as long as they're standing still. We're going to couple that and put a Nimble Slice on it. This is going to reduce the damage of it, but make it cost less key to perform, therefore allowing us to just get more hits in. Now, to make sure we can get those hits, we need a big beefy target that's not going to move. And when it comes to that, the High Spirited Demon is going to be the mission of choice. So if you're early in the game, obvious spoilers, this is Region 5. But I'm going to jump in, show you how I speed run through this, and then show you the process of farming against the demon so you can see how fast we build up familiarity. Now, as with any speed run, I suggest you have a barrier talisman, a quick change scroll, and a tiger running. Now, we're actually in our normal gear to run through this. There are a couple enemies we need to kill to make our way to the boss. Fortunately, this isn't the kind of mission you can just sprint straight through. Wait for the ferret to pass. It had to be a feral. So Magatsu Warrior will usually attack you, but... And you can kill all this stuff if you want. We're just looking to get through this as fast as possible. So I am simply just 
just all an ass through. at this shrine. This next part can be a little bit of a pain in the ass because we need to wait for our, uh, our good friend to actually knock down a gate for us. So we're going to save our tiger running. I'm just going to hang out right here. see how like if we're even a little bit off the gate he won't actually destroy the gate there we go Open this shortcut just because this next run can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. It's also nice to get more tiger running. So now we got to go past uh, three boulders. So we'll rebuff again. We're gonna go a little bit and off to the side. Run up this a little bit and then run back and get off to the side. I don't know what that was all about. This one we can actually just kind of hold off in the corner there and avoid it. And now make sure that you pray at the shrine. <clears throat> so now that we're at the shrine, we are ready to begin the farm. Uh, we're going to switch on some gear that we want to level up. Uh, let's see. So let's put on, I'll put on these scout gauntlets. I need to get them up. And that's actually it. I'm, I'm working on uh, just really leveling up those, but I'll put on these as well, which are almost done. Um, so now we're going to buff up. And you're going to want to have on a earth folding talisman. This is going to allow us to jump right back to the shrine. We're not actually going to kill this boss. We're simply just looking to beat him on up. So make sure you pop your powder, and then head on in. I actually don't recommend going through all of his phases. I'll usually get him up until his uh, Dark Zone phase. And then right around that time, he ends up uh, just a little bit more of a pain in the ass because of the Dark Zone and the key. One buff is only about halfway done, so we still got plenty of buff time left. Yeah. Right. 
and we'll head back. So just that little bit of farm right there on our gloves, as you can see, we pulled in 500 familiarity and that took us what? Two, three minutes, if that, not even. And this is all we're gonna do. We're gonna do this, we're gonna go in, we're gonna bust this guy's hands up. And as we continue to bust his hands up, we're going to continue to get uh, nice and loaded up. Um, also recommend not locking on. You can really do this with any boss, but Dino Robochi is a great choice because nice big targets where you're getting multiple hits in, kind of stays still for the majority of the fight. It just it makes them a really easy target to do this on. Gloves done, and on to my next pair. And once the hand gets down to like one, don't even bother. We want as many hits as possible. And so if there's only like one hand or uh, one one finger still coated in crystals. It's not really worth it. We want to be hitting as many hits on as many targets. There's that waste that we swapped to in the last last fight against him. That's probably about enough. So we're gonna wrap this th up here. Um, obviously, this is a long process, you know, especially when you're trying to really min-max. Um, a lot of the times, when it comes to specific things like windstorm damage, or uh, I mean, I've, I've had windstorm damage. I've seen stuff for blade spin. I've seen stuff for yeah, quick draw. All of those are gonna be on gloves, and attack is also going to be on gloves. So, point is, it's kind of a pain in the ass to max out your familiarity, but doing it this way seems to be the fastest method that has been found so far. So, either way, gonna wrap this one up here. Once again, big thanks to To Clement for showing me this method so that I could share it with you guys, and I'll catch y'all next time with some more Neo 2.